This is Katie Hunter from MA UK. I'm here with Chef Ian Larios. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Last time was Vegas. Now we're in London. I'd enjoyed the fights and I was a little bit tipsy. Yeah, I see I wasn't tipsy, but I figured that uh, you're going to enjoy Vegas a little bit. No problem there. Everyone enjoys Vegas every now and then. So it's fight week again. Crazy situation. You've got uh, eight fighters on the card. Yeah, so we got eight guys on the card. Um, it's another crazy week for Lockhart and Leith, yeah. um, but it's easy. We got we got a bunch of our Cert twos getting certified here, so it's they're helping out immensely. And then we got Eric Trilegi, our head chef here. Um, so we got we got it down. People are eating every three hours. We're at an Airbnb, so they just got to run across the street to the hotel, and all our guys are taken care of. So how many of you are staying in the Airbnb? Oh, we got the whole army here. We got we got the whole squad, um, but we make it work. People are sleeping on the floors and sleeping on the couches, but we make it work. For the little sleep we get, we get a little bit of sleep. And it's probably um, quite a, quite a good thing that um, you've got a, a kitchen here, so it's not like, um, yeah, I quite often see you cooking in hotel rooms. See, I, I take pride in, in being a, a five-star hotel room chef, but it changes the game when we have a kitchen. We have an oven, um, and like I said, when we have all the, all the certs here, it makes everything a lot easier for us. Does it improve the quality of food as well, I imagine? It does. So, yeah. I mean, when you have a kitchen and you have a, a, an actual sink, uh, washing dishes in a, uh, in a hotel sink is an ideal. Yeah. Um, we have a garbage disposal here, which is... I have appreciation for garbage disposals now because washing dishes in a hotel room sink, if, until you do it, it you'll, you don't know, but it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's a complete nightmare. And we also sometimes see you working one-on-one -on -one with fighters. How different is it working with a team of chefs on a team of fighters than, say, when you're doing Cody Garbrandt, Sol Soli, and his wife? Um, it's definitely more personal. You spend, uh, I always tell people, I spend more time with, with my athletes that I work personally with than, than pretty much any other coach. You live with them, so you, you really see what their, their daily routine is like. You're part of the family for four or five, six weeks, however long you're there. Um, so it's definitely more personal. Um, a lot of these times when you have eight guys, it's just minor interactions. You go up there, drop off food, ask how they're feeling, uh, kind of figure out what their schedule is, and then, then go from there. So definitely it's more personal when you're, when you're living with them, obviously. And it looks like the f fighters are eating really well um, this week. Today is Thursday, weigh-ins are tomorrow, and the guys are still eating? Yeah, they're eating every three hours, so we, everyone's on point t this week. Everyone's light, everyone's feeling good, um, and everyone's eating, so we're gonna, they're going to eat their way to the scale. And uh, like I said, we got a bunch of guys here, so it's, it's, it's easy when you have, when you have numbers and, and you got a large amount of fighters like we do on this card. And what's been your favorite creation this week? Oh man, I uh, the the pheasant. The f uh, first time I ever made pheasant was with Eric, and we made we made a, a kumquat oat berry um, garlic stuffing, um, and it was delicious. It was herb crusted, and uh, we did a little balsamic blueberry reduction on top, and it was over a over a bed of uh, pureed uh, asparagus. So it was it was crazy. It was really good, and uh, we gave that to Gunny, and he was like. Is that the one you posted yesterday? That's the one I posted, yes. Yeah, because Instagram went down, so I was trying to post it, and then it ended up posting this morning. But yeah, it was, so that was yesterday I posted today. But yeah, it was, a, it was a good one. It looked amazing, and so did the dish that you created for Arnold Allen. Yeah. I mean, pretty much everything we make this week is guys are, guys are shocked by, by it being weight cut food, you know? Yeah. So just really balancing flavors, and uh, having Eric here makes everything a lot easier. Well, it's like, I imagine going to a fine dining restaurant because it's beautiful, picturesque food, but just a slightly smaller portion of it. Exactly. And it comes on a paper plate, so that makes it that much cooler. You're like, <laughs> we're the king of the paper plate, paper plate game. And as you said, you're at an Airbnb down the road. So yeah. I've been seeing you come in, rush into the hotel, meals on wheels with, <laughs> or on feet anyway, with tinfoil over the plates. Yeah, so I think it's about a four-minute walk, and I have long legs, so I'd, I think I could do about three and a half minutes. Um, so really, the, f the, the full kitchen makes it worth it, because um, we can bring out meals a lot faster. And yeah, it's not too bad. Usually, when we're in the hotel rooms, we're just going down an elevator, but I'll, I'll trade three minutes to, to cook in a full kitchen. Yeah. 
and everyone's eating at different times and yeah everyone's got different wake up times everyone has different training times so everyone's schedules are all over the place um sometimes every now and then like everyone's on the same schedule which is awesome because then we could bang out a couple meals yeah back to back um but for the most part everyone's got different wake up times so they're kind of different schedules but we we make it work and I imagine out of all your eight fighters, everyone's got some degree of a cut to make either tonight or tomorrow morning. Yeah, nothing crazy this week. Um, everyone's actually pretty light. Um, so people are going to start their cut today. Um, and then, yeah, everyone will be on weight early tomorrow morning and we'll get them all reloaded up and uh, ready to go. But yeah, nothing crazy this week, luckily. We, we, everyone came prepared and like, we work with true professionals um, who stay ready yeah. year round. So, I mean, that's the biggest thing is guys that guys that stay ready and in shape all year round usually don't have to have that difficulty that much difficulty making weight so talk to us about the reload because we we quite often see guys with um a liter bottles of of shakes with numbers on them yeah. for the order they've got to drink them in when do you calculate what goes into them and when do you make them up and when do they get given to them so it's kind of based off their their beginning of the week weight um, so during fight week, but basically we calculate the exact uh, glycogen their muscles can hold, the exact amount of potassium they lost, and the exact amount of sodium they lost throughout the week. So everything we pull out, we're putting back in in a specific number of shakes, depending on how tough the cut is. There's going to be more, depending on how little they cut, there's going to be less. So it's completely customized. It's, it's, there's, no, there's no cookie cutter um, shake that we give to all our athletes. Uh, it's, it's specifically for them and their cut and their body type, which is really no one else is doing that right now yeah. um and that's how it should be you know i mean each cut's different each one everyone's body type is different mm -hmm. um so it's completely customized for them and even if you've done that fighter before the shakes could be different based on what weight they started fight week yeah and their their body fat could change it could put on more muscle so that's gonna they're gonna need more they're gonna more glycogen um so yeah everything can change i mean it's just their body fat drops three percent that's a completely different shake and uh, what are people eating when they're allowed to eat again after these shakes or do they run wild and do their own thing? Usually at this level they don't run wild. Um, obviously some guys do, um, but I, I'll, I'll let them go do their thing. We, we write down everything they should be doing, the exact amounts. If they aren't working with us for after, um, after, after weigh-ins, then uh, usually guys like to go out with their families and, and kind of take some time to, to spend with their family when they're rehydrated and feeling good and enjoy some time with their team and family um but at this point you're so close to the fight like a lot of guys just just eat healthy and keep it keep it clean and keep what they've been eating for the past eight weeks i mean why change it up you just made weight you're gonna fight i mean after the fight go crazy i'm not i'm a fan of guys enjoying a couple nights after the fight to to eat some eat some pizza and eat some foods they enjoy mm -hmm. um but pretty much keeping it the same um style food you've been eating uh throughout camp so i take it masvidal's not one of your guys for this camp he's not no do you want to know what he's having post weighing what's he having <laughs> a curry <laughs> from an indian restaurant <laughs> A chicken tikka masala, maybe a vindaloo, and some okay. cheesy bread. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Indian food. Um, but after a weigh-in, uh, probably not the biggest fan of all that dairy. But I mean, Could be a know. windy night in the octagon. <laughs> it could be, it could be. But man, a guy at his level has been doing it for so long. I remember seeing videos of him like eating McDonald's before training. And some guys are just anomalies and can can do those things, but it it only lasts so long. You can, you can only get away with it for so long. Yeah. He looks great anyway, but like you said, he's one of the anomalies. It's going to be a great fight. Yeah, no, I'm Till's, Till's a big boy, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Masvidal's not coming here to get beat up, so he's, it's going to be a great scrap. What fight are you most looking forward to on the card? Uh, honestly, Gunnar Nelson and uh, Leon Edwards. Um, you're, you're doing both guys doing, between you all? We're doing both guys, yeah. So Eric's actually working with, with Leon. I'm working with Gunny. Um, so we don't we don't really talk about their weight together. We don't really talk about much what's going on with with that specific ath athlete. So there's no conflict of interest. Um, For me, I think I'd be relieved to know that my opponent was taking their weight seriously and they were going to make weight as well. So I'd be quite happy with you working for them as well. And the biggest thing, I mean, at this level, you want your you want your opponent. You want to beat the best opponent, right? You want to yeah. beat you want to beat them at their best. Um, so them working with us, they're going to be at their best. Um, so I think every person wants to beat the best version of their opponent yeah. and that's what they're going to be in the best shape ever and they're going to have tr easy weight cuts so I mean they're both going to be in they're both in good hands so yeah. and for us Londoners it's 
the best card I think we've ever seen. Certainly all the way through the card with some amazing fights. Any others that, that you'd pick out for fireworks? Fireworks, I think uh, Arnie, uh, he's, he's, he always comes to scrap. Um, who else we got? Pretty much, man. Any that whole the, co the whole card is pretty stacked. Yeah. Um, main events obviously going to be good. Uh, Dan Ige, he's always fun to watch. Yeah. Um, who else we got? Joe Duffy, that's going to be a great scrap too. Um, yeah, it's just all around. It's a bunch of great fights. I'm, I'm pumped. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time. I know how hectic fight week is for you. And just before we go, I know it's been a long time since you've been home. How long? It's going to be nine weeks, nine weeks uh, on Sunday. Nine weeks. And you're only back for three days? I think so. Uh, I'm hoping I get the whole week at home, but we'll see. Uh, got Nashville coming up um, and then Philadelphia right after that. And then, yeah, it's back in the swing. I think. I'm going on vacation, though, in, uh, in April. So, What is it like to be on the road that much? Uh, I mean, you realize that uh, I don't like a lot of my clothes that I wear all the time because <laughs> uh, that's all I've had for nine weeks. I'm kind of tired of the outfits I have. Um, but it's living out your bag is different, but I'm excited to get home, see my dog, see my girlfriend and, uh, kind of take a little break and then get back in the swing of things. Awesome. Thanks so much for fitting me in. No problem. Thank you.